In this tutorial, I will show you how to apply gradients to boards in Cavalry. There are a number of ways to apply gradients to boards in Cavalry. I will show you five different methods which are useful for different scenarios. I'll make sure to include the project file we'll create in this tutorial on the Gambrot with a number of examples I put together earlier. You can download them for a small donation if you wish so. So to get started, I have a simple paragraph, color array and a gradient shader. So the colors are applied into color array so I can control them easily. So let's say you want to apply a gradient to this text and simply drag and drop gradient. And what's happening is that Calorie is treating every single letter as an individual shape. So this gradient shape there is applied equally across every single letter or every single shape. Now, if this is the look you're going for, that's perfect. If not, we need to do a few things. I'm going to add sub mesh. And then on the first page, we need to click flatten mesh at a level and then change it to words. And as you can see, now we have gradient apply to every single word, one word at a time. This button flatten mesh at a level converts this text paragraph into individual meshes. And you can see that better with Mesh Explorer. Plug this into the side. So as you can see, we have the whole thing separated into words. If I change that, just disable this button, then everything is separated into individual characters. If I switch this to lines, then every single line has a gradient applied to it. As you can see, we only have four lines. And if you have a uh, single words at the end, then the gradient will start from left side all the way here versus the other lines, which they start on this side and end here, here and here. So this is not ideal if you want to apply gradient across the whole paragraph. To fix this issue, we don't need submesh. We can simply add flatten shape layers. This flattens this paragraph, this text layer, into a single mesh. And the gradient will treat this as a single mesh. So you can easily adjust this across whole paragraph. So that's the very basic way of applying gradient to text in Cavalry. However, if you want to apply gradients to individual words, you need to follow a slightly different workflow. So the first method I'll show you is using visibility sequence to only limit gradient to specific words. So what we need is custom shape. Now, custom shape is like an instance in Cinema 4D. You have to drag the text layer into input shape and we have a perfect copy of our text. I'm going to call this custom shape gradient selection. Now, I need to drop it as a child of our text paragraph. So, I can easily zero out position and now the instance is positioned perfectly in the same spot as the main text layer. Let's check if everything's working correctly. If I enable a fill button on the instance, we can see the color changes. Now you might be a little bit surprised how the parenting works because this layer is at the bottom of the parent layer. So this is child, this is parent. The way this works in Cavalry is if you go to advanced step and there is a checkbox draw on top of a parent, if you uncheck it, then Cavalry will render layers in the order on the timeline. So this layer will render on top of the child. I'm going to leave it as it is. 
Now I have a simple gray in shader. What I'm going to do is drop it onto our instance in the fill box. And as before, every single letter or mesh is treated individually and the gradient goes from one side to another per letter. So we have to fix that by creating sub mesh. And again, simply selecting words from level mode and click flatten mesh at a level. Next, we have to add visibility sequence to the visibility field and select the words we want to keep visible. For example, number four to five. So what I just typed in is an index of a word in this paragraph. So counting from the beginning, this is zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Let's change the end field to zero. And now we only have four and five visible. So this is how you can easily animate the visibility sequence. And we can add more words to it, like eight, let's say 20 and so on. You can separate them by the comma or use the double dot punctuation sign to highlight a range. Okay, so let's just leave it four and five selected. Now to fix the problem of the gradient being mapped per word, we have to go to the gradient shader and enable a screen space. This means that this gradient is matched to the composition size. So now we can just drag the gradient knots to adjust how this will look on our design, like this. Or we can do this from the screen as well. And you can rotate it as needed and so on. Now in the second method, we will use apply text material. A few versions ago, Cavalry team introduced something called material behaviors. So by selecting apply text material, we can add a material to a text itself. Now this works by either specifying indexes, adding material to everything, or you can use regex. For example, I can type in design and this will automatically highlight every single word with design in it. Or you can use a single letters and so on, or regex code. In this case, we are going to use specific indices and I'm going to change the index mode to word. And as before, let's highlight color transition, go to fill tab and drop our gradient shader. And again, we have the same problem as before. So to fix that, we just simply select our gradient shader and again, select screen space. And then we can adjust the knots on the gradient to change our color and how it's being rendered across these two words. The difference between visibility sequence and apply text material is that we can actually see how the gradient is being represented on the composition level, but the apply text material method does not show these controls, even when I have the gradient shade is selected. So that's one of the limitations. A third method is going to use formatted input. Formatted input is this field in a text layer. We have a number of options, but what I'm going to do is simply duplicate our paragraph, turn it off, change it to gradient, and I'm going to delete everything except color transition. Okay, next I need to turn on our main paragraph layer, then grab the gradient and drop it onto the formatting input. So this formatting input field accepts number of layers like string, string arrays, text shape, which is this layer. And once you do that, Calvary will automatically add a tag at the end of our string. So it's hard to see, but this tag is simply curly bracket with a number. 
So next, I just need to insert this curly bracket with a number, and then I have code transition populated here. So to make it more clear, I can simply keep adding all the other text in our gradient layer, and this text will be automatically populated in this main paragraph layer. So that's how formatting input works. Okay, so we've got our text insertion going on. What this will allow us is simply, if I select the gradient layer, go to fill and drop the shader. We can easily drop a shader into just this specific text layer. And as before, cover is mapping gradient to every single mesh. So to fix that, we can simply enable screen space. And this way you can adjust how the gradient is behaving. Another benefit of for using formatted input is that I can easily change the font, for example, let's use extra light italic in our gradient text layer, and only these words will be affected. So this is a great way to style the text, including changing its font. So let's talk about index to color method. The credit for discovering this workflow goes to Travis on Discord, and this method uses apply text material as before. So I'm just going to change this to red so we can see what's going on. So as before, we are simply changing the color of the first and the last character. So if I change this to maybe something like seven, there you go. This whole thing works without problems. In the fill tab, we have to add utility, index to color tool. It's going to pin it here, go to color array, select one of my colors, drag and drop these colors. Perfect, so I have a gradient. Now to check if this thing is still working, we simply have to add a selection uh, to our indices. Maybe let's select something a bit longer. There you go. So the way index to color tool works is that it maps this gradient across all of these shapes, but this is not a smooth transition. What I mean by, by this is that each shape has one color at a time. In the previous examples, we had a transition of color across multiple shapes, so it was more of an overlay. Index to color assigns a single color to a shape. So it works best when your selection is really long. Now, as you can see, I have to keep typing these numbers in, and that's a little bit difficult to target specific words. In this case, I want to target color transition. So to make things easier, we can build a simple rig in here. So add utility string generator. The specific indices field takes strings. If we add formatted string and delete everything here and here, and let's add one other indice. I'm going to rename this to start and this one to end. So formatted string lets us create a string and use all of these elements in it as well. So you recall these elements with a curly bracket, bubble dot, curly bracket, and one. So I'm recalling zero and one. So if I put something like AAA and this one PVD, go up a level, and as you can see, we are populating indices with these letters. So we can use letters, numbers, signs, everything in here. To make things easier and in a way that you can animate it, we have to add a string generator to start and again, a string generator to end. Zero out precision and padding. And again, on the other side, 
just going to pin the end to top and start as well. Okay, so this is where the fun starts. You can easily drag this number and this one, and that makes it much easier to change the indices using these numbers like sliders. As you can see, let's just change it to zero. This index to color is mapped across our selection. So you can squeeze it like that and the whole thing updates as well. So you don't have to keep the uh, gradient nodes on either ends. So this is pretty cool method. It works best in my opinion when you have a longer strings you want to select or you want to animate this selection because you can easily add keyframes here and here go forward a little bit and there we go the whole thing will animate one mesh at a time now the last method we'll talk about is extract submesh method credit for discovering this workflow goes to Evgeny on discord the way it works is you add extract submesh uh, tool this tool works by extracting meshes from the input shape so we can drop our paragraph in here just going to hide it for now and i'm going to change this to words and disable empty submeshes as you can see we've got the first and last word so this works nicely you can easily select different indices i'm going to leave it at zero for now and then i'm going to make it a child of our gradient layer turn it on and this will let me zero out position of this extract submesh layer so it's in perfect position as our parent layer then i'm going to select fourth and fifth word to check that this is working perfect the color works so finally as before we can just drop a simple gradient shader in the shaders field just like the standard look we had before and we have the same issue where every single mesh is being treated as individual uh, shape to simply correct that we can just add flatten shape layers and as before you can easily adjust this gradient and the great thing is that you can actually see what is going on because you got the visual guide on the screen and as before with formatted input string method we can add extra shapes to it for example 8 to 10 and as you can see, the gradient will span across all the shapes and update in real time. Hopefully this was useful. Each of these methods is using slightly different approach and offers different ways of working with color and word selection in Calvary. I'll make sure to include the project file on Gamroad with everything we just created plus a number of examples i put together earlier if you wish to explore them for a small donation thanks and see you guys next time